is being wired that this webinar is recorded. Uh, the planned length of the webinar is 30 minutes. Uh, then it will depend on how many questions you ask at the end. I'm Ludovic Martinchin. I'm founder of the platform hosting today's webinar. The platform is, is called uh, Digital Transformation in Industry, and we focus on education and the initiation of uh, digital transformation projects in, in companies. As I wrote in the in the invitation, there is a war in Ukraine, but business must go on. So I'm very pleased that I can introduce you my Ukrainian colleagues, uh, Mr. Grigory Stepanik. He is connected from Kyiv, <laughs> where he lives. So greetings to to Kyiv. And Mrs. Leila Bagirova, she's responsible for sales. She moved first to the south of Germany and later to Poland. So greetings to the city of Jeshu. And uh, I consider the company's approach to retail business to be very interesting and innovative. And company has international references as well. So this is why I asked Grigori and, and Leila to prepare this, this webinar for you. So. Grisha, Leila, it's it's your turn now, and we are looking forward to learning new perspectives in in retail. Uh, thank you, Ludovic. Okay, I will uh, start about the company. Uh, actually, we are IT company, but we have very strong background working with retail for many years, and also with logistics. Um, but we are developing own IT products. They could work in cloud or we can sell them on premise. Uh, they're called our two main products are called uh, Grass Tech, which means uh, software for grocery retail, and Evermall, which is used for shopping malls. And we will talk about that uh, a bit more later. Uh, company is now registered in Estonia because uh, of the war, and uh, not only because of that, because we started to work with many other countries also before the war. But now we, we cannot say that we are a Ukrainian company. Yeah. But originally we are from Ukraine and part of the team is still in Ukraine, but in safety, uh, hopefully. <laughs> uh, so we work um, more than 10 years and uh, we use uh, different IT technologies, which I will also talk about later. We call it progressive IT technologies because we are working with uh, um, online retail with Q commerce, uh, quick commerce. Yeah, so we are trying to be um, on the wave yeah, of these new technologies. And now the team is 40 plus uh, people who are working and um, uh, we can be just system provider, but in maybe 70% of our projects, we also are uh, like technological partner for 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 digital transformation so we have a digital transformation team uh, these people are not it specialists they are specialists in, in e-commerce in uh, logistics in warehouse management and so on uh, because we help also other companies to build the correct processes correct business processes um, and now when we when we are talking about I will add here. So basically we're talking about uh, consulting. So we provide both IT services and consulting services because what uh, we see is that retail is very has a very high expertise in actual retail, but it's difficult uh, uh, to find expertise in, in house uh, for building a last mile, mile delivery or e-commerce channel. Uh, and that's why they um, need uh, not only soft uh, software, but uh, the specialists as well, uh, who could uh, build uh, all the processes. Exactly. So to earn money, yeah, you need to to have specialists. Earn money, right. build and uh, and uh, yeah. And if we're talking about money, I will also add that uh, uh, we do help uh, to calculate uh, the business model because the thing is that. Uh, um, the retail uh, doesn't uh, know the cost, the costs for delivery, uh, for quick delivery, for couriers, and uh, um, all this. And uh, so it's uh, difficult to calculate uh, whether to go 
um, whether it's profitable and whether to go in the project uh, or not. And uh, we do help to calculate the business model for, for retailers. Yeah, we will not talk about that today because it will take too long and we need to have uh, numbers. But uh, we always are starting project with that. Uh, okay, so coming back to the presentation, uh, of course, during the last uh, two years, because of the COVID and in general, this shift in the world to omnichannel retail, uh, we focused on, um, on, on that transformation. Uh, exactly what Leila said, we see that in most of the brick and mortar retail, there are no expertise, no proper software for that. And retail is the biggest, one of the biggest industries in the world. So the market is huge, we understand that. Many started already to do something, but we also faced that uh, they started, but they were not successful. They were not earning money because they didn't have a proper team, proper knowledge how to build the, the correct business processes, first of all, and how to use technologies. So that's where we are, we are helping them. Uh, uh, of course, uh, when we're talking about omnichannel retail, we are talking that it's new customer value proposition that we uh, uh, deliver. Quick delivery is important now, uh, planned delivery. Um, we're also um, working with uh, digital native consumer brands, which means that uh, a lot of things could be sold online, uh, like from dark store. They, they are not needed to be somewhere uh, offline available in general. And that gives another possibilities to sell more. Uh, and um, of course, it's new revenue streams. Uh, and now there are, uh, it was standard, let's say, approach like buy on the website. But now people are using mobile applications, which gives uh, much more possibilities to interact with them. Uh, there is so-called um, now uh, social sales. Yeah, when people are recommending each other, getting some bonuses from the sales, but like they are giving some comments, making some videos, uh, how they use what they bought, for instance, and that helps to sell, it's like recommendations. And we have that functionality also in, in our software. Uh, so of course, we are talking that this post COVID uh, environment requires these uh, technologies and who knows if COVID will return or not. So <laughs> that's why we are, and helping to, to be prepared for everything. Uh, of course, you, you probably know the prerequisites, but just very quickly, uh, most of the customers can buy now online and offline, and the new uh, age, the, the young age people, yeah, the new generation, they prefer to buy online uh, in most of the cases. Uh, so uh, the customer acquisition cost is rising. Uh, that we have different um, net numbers yeah, from different sources, but again, the average number it was that customer acquisition costs increased for 60% over past five years. So it's very important to work with the existing clients, with their loyalty, and that's also what we will talk a bit more. Uh, and the offline traffic is decreasing, especially in the malls. Um, so <laughs> malls are now suffering a lot. Uh, in the US, for instance, many malls are closed already. And uh, the, the trend is like that, that if the malls are not changing, they will be closed. Many of them will be closed. So the malls are going in, into digital world, uh, become online like marketplaces. And uh, retail is going like in the dark stores or in omnichannel retail. Okay, so uh, solution, uh, we say that um, for important is yeah, the, to digitalize customer experience. Uh, when we know the data, when we have the data, we know the client, we can uh, increase sales because we know not only what he bought, but how often he was opening, for instance, the application, what he was doing there. So much, much more data and we know our clients if, we, if I'm a retailer, yeah, to know the clients, it's very important and it's, uh, it's becoming a big value. Uh, the same also for the malls, but they don't know their clients at all because they just give in place, uh, giving some square meters to rent, for the rent. 
but they don't know their clients. And to know the clients uh, brings uh, great benefits. Uh, also, uh, we say that um, stores can be transformed into the logistics hub, uh, into the last mile delivery um, points. So uh, for city, yeah, it's, it's important, quick delivery, 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes delivery, not everywhere, but it's uh, what we see, it's more and more uh, companies are uh, giving this service, quick delivery. And uh, that's why the standard stores should be transformed into dark stores, or maybe part of them should be like a dark store, part like a usual store, or it can be combined. So that's what we are doing. We, help, we, we are helping to do that, to, to uh, give possibility uh, for the client to get something in 15 minutes, for instance. So the speed is very important. Uh, yeah, so and I will start if you if you let me if you let me, uh, Grisha. Uh, what statistics uh, the recent statistics uh, says uh, in terms of delivery? So if we have uh, uh, one hundred, if we say that delivery is uh, one hundred percent, sixty percent will be quick delivery, five will be uh, pick and collect when uh, the person comes to the point and collects uh, himself, and only thirty five percent. Uh, of uh, people use uh, planned delivery. So uh, the world is shifting not only to delivery itself, but to quick delivery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we can see on the real cases with our clients. Okay, so in customer experience platform, that's uh, the narrow network we are using for that, that the system is learning everything about the customer and uh, sends him push messages, uh, propose something. That's like a personal loyalty, which uh, helps to grow LTV and increase profit from the customer. Uh, yeah, that's uh, some slides saying that um, it's based on our uh, data, based on our clients, uh, how the numbers are growing. Uh, so GMV is growing um, approximately on 5-8% during 12 months. Uh, customer lifetime value is growing for 9-12%. You can see the data, yeah, but important is that um, the, it's re uh, real money is coming. Yeah? We also know that um, not good cases yeah, when people invested and didn't earn on that. Uh, that's why it's very important is to understand um, how the business is working to calculate the financial model what we were talking before yeah, to, to prepare business processes. But in successful cases, we can see that indicators are growing and at the end, uh, income is growing. Uh, important, yeah, that's um, uh, important thing here is that we can have bigger assortment in some cases, if we're talking about marketplace or standard retail, so we, it's easier to add more uh, more goods, more SKU in the category or add in other categories which are even not presented offline. But for quick delivery, it's also very important to work with a short assortment like uh, 1,500 SKU, for instance, or maybe 2,000. But this is uh, uh, the quick delivery. It's, it's used for quick delivery and also possible for quick purchase in the application a user uh, interface is realized uh, in the way that the customer can very quickly buy it or even say by their voice what he wants driving in the car. So that's like the additional service to the customer, which uh, um, which uh, increase at the end the profit. Okay, and uh, expected financial results. Yeah, that's, um, you can see the numbers. Uh, the revenue is growing. Um, we can again play with the, with the exact numbers. We always try to calculate very precisely the numbers before we are starting the project. We can even do some additional work to calculate numbers, to investigate what will be the right number, but it's very important to start with that. Um, and uh, yeah, personalization important is the third thing. Uh, we saw that this personalization, personal loyalty, uh, helps to grow conversion rate uh, for five seven percent, 
and also average order uh, value. When you are just sending SMS or some message uh, to everybody, it's not personalized. The conversion rate is very uh, low and we can increase that and spend less money and get more, more sales after that. Again, later we'll talk about some more details. Uh, and if you are looking on the market, we understand that such big companies like Gorillas, for instance, Glovo, they were growing very quickly. Of course, they, they got a lot of investments, but all over the world appeared young companies which now earn uh, billions of dollars and they cost billion, billion of dollars and they have thousands of employers. So uh, this market opened very quickly and um, it's expected that till 2030, uh, more than 50% of grocery sales will be online. So people will just order everything uh, online, will get the delivery and uh, <laughs> there are even expectations that the fridge will not be needed because people will prefer to order fresh food when they need it and it's uh, where the world is going. Okay, so... Uh, a little bit about Glovo, I would like, to, for example, I would like to add, because basically Glovo starts competing with retail because they do open their own dark stores and uh, 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 there are several points. First, that uh, uh, the retailer has to share uh, its margin with Glovo if, if it doesn't have uh, delivery yet. The second uh, thing is that it's not uh, always possible. You don't control this uh, uh, delivery uh, because quick delivery is all about uh, being very technological. Like you're, you have to pick products in two minutes at your dark store uh, to, to deliver in 20, 30 minutes. Uh, and uh, Glovot or any other uh, supplier is not uh, always uh, able to provide such a service, so you don't control that uh, uh, as much uh, uh, as uh, you do control this if you have this in-house. And the second thing is that uh, you have to share uh, your margin and um, well, that, they, uh, uh, that uh, Glovo um, and uh, other delivery companies, they open their own dark stores and start uh, competing uh, with the retailers and uh, uh, taking the part of the market. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> if, if the company will work only with third service, which is selling them, uh, at some moment they could just sell themselves without, without the retailer. That's true. Yeah, because, okay. uh, because, because they don't share uh, the, the, the other important thing is that they don't share the data because uh, uh, the clients uh, actually uh, make orders uh, for example, through this third party, and the retailer doesn't uh, get access to this uh, data. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah. uh, personification uh, and uh, uh, work on uh, customer lifetime value is impossible in such case. Uh, yeah, okay. So we are coming to presentation of the platform. Uh, we created the platform. It was Many parts of it was existing before the COVID. We were working with retailers, with logistics. Uh, but now what we propose, like one platform, all in one, yeah, it's a front. Yeah, so it's interfaces, uh, app or website. Uh, we see in our um, project that 80, approximately 80% 80 of the people prefer to use application, mobile application. And it also, uh, we can collect more data from the application. Uh, we have uh, middle, it's like service bus, special service bus to manage all integrations. Of course, integrations are needed. And that's always a um, thin, let's say, question, yeah, or how, how to do that. So we, we realized uh, a bus for, to, to, to be able to integrate with everything almost. And backend, uh, backend is cloud native. It's like ERP solution. Uh, but it's uh, 
it's uh, used for this Q commerce for omni-channel commerce. Uh, it's uh, it's already it's uh, realized in this way. So of course we customize it in in each project, but it uh, it's not big customization. Also front can be customized. We can do branding everything, but the UX UI uh, designed in the way uh, that helps the customer to buy quickly to <laughs> let's say to to enjoy the process. Yeah? Um, so um, we cover, let's say, 100% of all business processes needed for this business. Uh, and uh, also, as we talked before, we have a professional team for a turnkey solution. So we, we have guys for, with, with uh, cross-industry even expertise, but with deep understanding of the online and uh, quick delivery retail. Um, the, the platform architecture, uh, yeah, microservices, it's important. For instance, we can substitute some modules of our system with some other uh, software which is used in the company because everything is by, uh, based on microservices. API first means that everything is, all the data is possible to exchange through API. Uh, cloud native. Uh, we have both uh, options to use our software uh, like uh, SaaS uh, on our servers or to buy it, but still it's uh, cloud native, uh, like most of the uh, modern software. And headless, headless means that uh, we can substitute any module which we have with some other software and nothing will change uh, for the business process. So for instance, we can, uh, another mobile application can be used or another ex customer experience platform can be used or warehouse management. So for us, it doesn't mean that uh, system will not work. <clears throat> um, yeah, important slide, why now? Yeah, mm, we face it in many sales mm, negotiations yeah, is it right time or bad time? Now the world's economy is decreasing because of the war and other factors. But uh, now still exists early mover advantage. That what we saw in 2020 and even 21, and still it exists. Who is who will be the first on this new market? They get more benefits. Uh, COVID, there are many talks that COVID could return or it could be next virus or whatever. So people <laughs> would like to have some protection. And of course, this uh, omni-channel uh, helps to, uh, let's say, to, to protect the business because people, of course, will continue to buy something, but they not always like to go somewhere. Uh, rise of digital native brands, that's what is happening all over the world. There are sales through Instagram for uh, dozens or hundreds of thousands of dollars through the Instagram, for instance. So more and more brands uh, um, think that the, the digital uh, channel is quite enough for them. And uh, for offline retailers, it's important to have them as well. Uh, costs are growing now. Uh, everything is growing, so uh, we understand that for standard of line retail, you have square meters. You need to have light there and pay for that. Uh, to have uh, heat, so uh, it's the costs for for the for the square meter is growing. Uh, in case of the dark stores or some uh, combined uh, schema. So the costs are usually much lower for the square meter, uh, which is needed. And even rent for the dark store, rent of the square meter, because they, they shouldn't be on the main street, it could be somewhere, uh, uh, they are much lower. Uh, and even having existence infrastructure, existing stores, it's possible to change the store to have part of it as a dark store and earn more money on that than just uh, having uh, it's like standard uh, brick and mortar. 
Okay, and the uh, opportunity for market share growth, of course, it's important. And I could say also here what we see now that the companies who are uh, omnichannel, they are, their value is higher because the coefficients are higher. So uh, we calculated a few times that, for instance, our project projects they help to increase the value of the company sometimes in 1.5 uh, times for, for 50 percent just increase the value because uh, of this adding of the new source um, yeah business model how to work it's quite simple uh, platform is ready so it, it's of course needed to be set up there is some deployment fee but we always try to work with some success fee after project uh, launch or success fee for some uh, reaching break even point, for instance, or from each transaction. <laughs> it means that if, if business is earning, we are also earning. If business is not earning, uh, uh, it should not pay us money. Uh, it's like honest approach, win-win approach, we think. And we help because of that. We help. Uh, we support business to earn money because we are interested in that. Uh, we are coming to short demo. Uh, I will. It, it will be really short because to make a normal demo, we need uh, one hour, maybe two hours sometimes. But uh, there is system modules, uh, all needed modules uh, are available for basic accounting for omni uh, for omni retail functionality. And for retail functionality, standard one. And also important that we have uh, last mile courier application, all these things, uh, and uh, analytics. So, uh, to show the demo, we think that it's better to show through cases. So, we can imagine some customer who would like to buy something and get in 30 minutes. Uh, so, he's using the mobile application with all the categories, uh, data in the application can be uploaded from another ERP system, existing ERP system, or from other sources. We help with that. So a mobile application, as I said, is developed. So there, there is no need to wait or to spend huge money for it. Uh, so customer can do everything, can do order, can pay, can pay by card, by cash, doesn't matter, and can see uh, some status. Important here is that our custom experience platform, as I said, it's based on a narrow network, but it um, helps to uh, show the relevant content on the screen. So you can imagine that if the customer prefers to buy some exact uh, wine or bread or cheese, this exact brand will be shown to him first of all. And also if he's belonging to some segment, that people of this segment prefer to buy some something, this will also be shown in the recommended uh, uh, goods. So he can buy it because of his behavior, usual uh, uh, customer behavior. So this increases the, the average basket. And important also that we can interact with them, we can show some promo, like discounts or something else, which also will be personalized. Uh, so, for instance, our customer, Sam, he did the, the order and he will see the status when <coughs> the courier should come and all the everything is online, all the statuses are changed online. Uh, to fulfill this order, we need a picker. Uh, this guy, let's call him Matthew, he has a terminal so he can work in, in the warehouse. There are some screens for him very quickly here. So system helps for all people, for all pickers, uh, exactly understand where they should take the concrete goods and everything. Just a second. Uh, nice, 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 time, nice. Time. Sorry. Okay, so um, uh, when the, the order is picked, then uh, the status is changed. And uh, the next guy, the courier, so he also has his interface. Uh, 
um, system task and where to go, well, what is the best route, uh, what to deliver, everything, all the details. He can call from his mobile phone or through IP telephony. It could be recorded and so on. Uh, and then there is some feedback uh, screen so the customer can say if he's satisfied or not. Uh, and important is that customer experience platform, we can do the settings, you can see the interface now, uh, to, uh, to send him some uh, messages, to send him some bonuses, to calculate something for him, etc. So there are many, many possibilities how to interact with the customer, uh, to see the, the analytics, what is working, what is not working, yeah, to adjust that uh, and to understand uh, what to propose to our customers. And you can see that if there is some trend growing for some, for instance, I don't know, new brand, new, new SKU, it can be proposed like for others because it's something uh, what, what is important to sell now, what will be interesting for people because of some reasons or other cases, there are many of them, but idea is that we always are trying to uh, con connect with the customer as much as possible, not, not to be like a spam, but really uh, gives him some value and earn money on that. Uh, so he will get some messages, as I said, that some templates, uh, and yeah, that was the, the quick demo. We, we are limited with time. Uh, so just at the end, I would like to say that we can uh, start the implement the system, uh, start after approximately 10, 16 weeks. And there are some steps, some of them are optional, uh, but uh, it's really quick start. And it could be quick try because uh, there are no high costs to try, system is ready, so it's easy, sometimes um, very easy to try, sometimes not so easy, but much more easier than to develop anything or to integrate different systems with each other or some, uh, some other problems. Uh, some of our existing clients, some of them are quite big. Um, we were focused uh, usually uh, during last years on the post-Soviet countries. <clears throat> also, we are working now in Emirates. We have projects in USA. Uh, and now we, we are starting to work with Europe. Uh, part of our team is in Europe. So uh, we see that everywhere uh, software is doing the same job, let's say. <laughs> processes, processes are the same, so there is no big difference between US market or European market or Ukrainian market. Of course, some, some nuances uh, we, we adjust, but uh, mostly that Q-commerce is the same everywhere. And now it's time to ask questions. I was trying to be very quick. <laughs> now I see that it's still half an hour past. So if you have any questions, please ask. Uh, I've got a technical question since it's my uh, line of field. Uh, the service is hosted on cloud you manage or you, or the service is um, deployed on the customer's uh, premise or cloud he chooses to? Both, both is possible. It depends um, on the chosen variant. We can sell the software, it, it will work on premise or we can sell it as a service. In this case, it will be on our servers, but you know what means our, yeah? we are, we agree where the servers will be. We control the servers, but uh, exact collocation or, you know, like hosting, it, it depends. We can choose yeah. in Germany, in Czech Republic, in other countries. We understand that in many countries, it's important that it's, uh, the location of the server should be in the same country. So we are okay with that because actually it's not system as a service, it's like platform as a service. In any case, for each instance, we have the different uh, server, mm -hmm. separate server, and it can yeah. be everywhere. Okay.
maybe one question from me uh, is about money. So how much does the system cost? As I said, uh, depending, of course, on the chosen variant, on the, if we are talking on premise, purchase on premise, it depends uh, if the all modules are purchased or not. Uh, <laughs> there is a calculator there. Uh, if we are talking about um, uh, SaaS model, then approximately it's usually it's between one and a half and three percent, let's say two percent uh, from the online um, uh, uh, from the online uh, turnover. So let's say if it's one million, uh, I don't know, per some period, we will take let's say one and a half percent from this one million. But again, it depends on the volume. You know, when mm -hmm. we are talking about IT things, you never can say the exact price because we need to calculate implementation, how much customization is needed, how many integrations, what will be the volume, uh, how many servers are needed, and so on. Yeah, so I can say approximately, uh, but for exact cases, we of course calculate, we ask, we have the questionnaire, we ask the questions based on that. We can calculate the exact numbers and they are very clear. We can show how we calculate them. So in case of some changes, the price could change, but it will, it will be transparent. So about 2%, let's say, if to be very short, 2% uh, yeah. of the turnover, so online the, turnover. Yeah, so this is only OPEX, what about CAPEX? If if it's a system as a service is just OPEX, you know, like yeah, OPEX. implementation can cost, of course, uh, sometimes it could cost you know, ten thousand euros. It's not big money. Uh, sometimes it could be even less because it depends on the customization and these things. Uh, we charge um, uh, different specialists for different rates. Developer is uh, usually fifty euros per hour. Analyst 40 euros, you know, like these things. So we can just calculate the, the price. It could be, as I said, um, around maybe 10,000, starting from 5,000 euros and up to, you, you never know. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And one more question, which is connected to this for the owner of the business, it's always important to calculate if this change is uh, profitable for him. Do you help uh, the owner to calculate this? Yeah, that's what we talked before. It's uh, the crucial thing to calculate the financial model and we help with that. We have different experience with different marketplaces, with different dark stores, uh, different retail networks. So quite enough expertise. We worked with McKinsey uh, in a few projects uh, together, they were helping also our customers to calculate something. So we have quite professional financial model, which is ready and you can play with that. Yeah. And often, very often, almost all the time, we see that we understand the numbers better than our customers because we have this experience. So we really are starting project with that. And uh, important is that you can always find a way how to earn money. For instance, you can deliver for free or you can take money for delivery. You can add something to the margin. You can agree some take rates with some merchant. So many different uh, aspects in this uh, financial model. But at the end, we are always are trying to find the scenario how to earn more. Um, in general, how to earn, yeah, and to earn as much as possible. And uh, what we see that at the end, our calculations are correct. That's important. That's because uh, it's uh, quite enough experience and data um, at the background of that financial model. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Our time is, is quite over so as usual <laughs> are, are there other any questions if 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 not so maybe the last question of what uh, how the potential owner or business owner can um, start communication with you via 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank it's you, Luda. Yeah. Very simple. <laughs> I, I forgot the last slide. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Leila is located in Poland, uh, so we can organize maybe some meeting if needed. Of course, in most of the cases, we are uh, organizing some Zoom conference or Google Meet or whatever. So uh, we can talk uh, about all details. We can show the software. We can talk about the business processes. Uh, we can help to do some researches if they are needed. And that's important also to make some researches to be to get some proof of some uh, ideas and these things. Uh, so for us, it doesn't matter where to work. Now the world is uh, still online, yeah, so we can uh, we can arrange meetings and uh, organize most of the works remotely. Uh, but uh, of course, we are ready to meet personally, in, uh, depending in which countries, <laughs> but to travel and to meet. So we are open uh, to communication and we'll, we'll be happy to help. Okay, thank you much. So I would like to thank you participants for, for joining us and I would like to thank you, Grisha and Leila, to, to delivering the webinar. And I hope we don't see each other for the last time. <laughs> so yes. th thank you very much. Have thank nice you day. as well for organization and for the participation. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, so we are only here. <laughs> I'm I'm surprised that more than 60 people I I, I stop the I stop the recording. Yeah.